Hey folks, it's Dr. Mike again. I'm here for installment number four of our medical exercise training one-on-one -on -one series. So as we've done before, I'm going to share with you one of our questions, one of the most common questions we receive over the last 24 years. And our question for the day is question number four, where you'll find this on page number 10 in the medical exercise training one-on-one -on -one manual. There's the manual cover right there. You can go out to medicalexercisetrainingebook.com to get your copy. But let me read the question to you. What types of MET clients will I work with in my practice? Here's our answer, and I'll elaborate more after I finish this. You will work with a wide range of clients when you open your practice. You have clients with neurological disorders, strokes, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease, cardiovascular conditions, hypertension, myocardial infarcts, coronary bypasses, and musculoskeletal disorders, including total hip replacements, disc herniations, and meniscal tears, just to simply name a few. These are just some of the conditions that you will work with in your practice. Clients will also seek your services to correct postural muscular imbalances and or improve strength, endurance, and flexibility around the joint. With all clients, complete a thorough medical history interview before initiating any assessment procedures and or exercise program. Once you've completed the medical history, then you can move on to the assessment and or the screening. The assessment and screening is designed to establish a baseline for strength, flexibility, endurance, stability, coordination, and balance. You also can identify residual functional deficits and establish a program of goals. If you identify any red flags, these may indicate a need for further medical services and a referral back to the medical professional may be necessary. Now, you will assess and find, or you'll find, I should say, or identify these red flags as you do your musculoskeletal screening, also in your medical history, as well as in your assessment. So the question here is, what type of clients will you, will you have? Well, folks, it's been interesting. Uh, as I've consulted with our MESs around the world, it's been amazing some of the conditions that you guys are seeing. I mean, you're seeing some things I never saw in all of my years in physical therapy practice. And it, it says this, that exercise crosses all medical disciplines, all diagnoses, and it really is the key to long-term management of most medical conditions. So you're going to see everything. Now, now here's the, the concern we have. As you see everything, you're not going to be able to manage everything. Just because a client comes in the door and you know, I've got a medical exercise special certification doesn't mean that client is appropriate for you, nor does it mean you have the skill set to manage that client. You may need to refer that client on. You may need to refer them on to another MES or consult with another MES or maybe consult with me or consult with their doctor, therapist, or chiropractor to get more information. I know there's a reluctance out there for some of our MESs to show that you don't know something. But folks, that actually is, is very important. And more importantly, it, it, it's a positive factor. Uh, I, folks, over the years, before we started the MES program, there were tons of times I would consult with a physician on a, a patient that we had or another therapist and say, hey, here's what I'm seeing. What do you think? Uh, or, or get someone else's ideas. We found here at our facility at Medical Fitness Pros, we initiated a case conferencing program every other Thursday with our staff meeting. We ask our MESs to present their most difficult client to the other MESs that were on staff in our facility here, medical fitness pros. What we found was the first couple of times there was a huge reluctance. Our staff members, even though they were MES certified, were very reluctant to let someone else know or another staff member know they weren't 100% sure of what to do with the client and they didn't want anyone to realize that they were just kind of winging it. I think the underlying problem was they were really afraid that they might lose that client to another trainer that knew more. That's not how it works. I think that's what occurs in the fitness industry because literally in a health club setting, the owner has all the clients. The owner throws in all the trainers and say, go for it, guys. Whatever you get is what you eat. And if you don't get anything, you're left out. Or when you do get a client, you hold on to them and you don't want anyone to know what you're doing with them. You know, you, you kind of look at your, your report you're doing with a client and you kind of hold it close so nobody else sees what you're doing. So in medical exercise training, that's not the case. You're going to have to share information. You're going to have to collaborate. You're going to have to work with others. And remember, two heads is always better than one. And last thing, just because you can find a textbook on it doesn't mean reading the textbook gives you the information that you need now to manage that client. 
Remember, textbooks are designed to work in a, a coordinated process. There's a textbook and there's an instructor that actually summarizes, clarifies, and applies the information in the textbook. I talked to one of our MES instructors a couple of days ago who had a lumbar issue and was asking me how he might manage it. And he said, well, I read something about this, but my question was, well, you read it, but you've never actually seen it and managed it. That's where practical education, that's where mentors, that's where clinical observation hours under a more advanced clinician works in the medical community. So be careful about the idea of just going in on your own, where I read the book. Remember, the book has many pieces that the author couldn't specifically explain, some esoteric components that the author couldn't explain and put in the written word. And, and I'll say this in close. Years ago, when I came out of PT school, some of the giants in manual medicine were uh, a guy by the name of uh, Bordillon, uh, Greenman, uh, Manel, particularly John Manel. Manel wrote the first book on, on mobilization. Um, and I read Dr. Manel's book. And when I went to graduate school at Michigan State, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Manel in person at a dinner party. Well, of course, I took my copy of the book along and um, you know, I finally got out the nerve to ask Dr. Manel to sign the book. He was a very big, jolly British gentleman. He said, oh, son, I'll be glad to sign your book. And he signed it. And then I got up the nerve to ask him a question. I said, Dr. Manel, I thought it was amazing the concept you have of a quarter inch of joint uh, play in a human joint. And he looked at me and he said, oh, no, my boy, you've got it all wrong. He said, it's not a quarter of an inch, it's an eighth of an inch. And then he said, I always wanted the editor to change that paragraph because people got it wrong. What Manel went on to tell me was, there's a quarter inch of joint space, of space in the human joint. That means a sixteenth and a sixteenth. What I thought it meant was there was an eighth of an inch on one side and an eighth of an inch on the other. What he meant was there was a sixteenth on one side and a sixteenth on the other that gave us a total of one eighth, which meant... I was looking at joint play of that much. He was looking at joint play of that much. You see how reading it and not actually interacting with the author gave me a completely erroneous understanding. So please, instead of being the Google Doc, where I looked it up on Google and this is what we should do, or I, even better yet, I went to the library, I ordered a book, and the book is going to tell me everything. Remember, the author can only put so much in the book. There's a component of that that requires learning and application in an on-site setting or direct communication with the author. So I beg you, when you see an article that you've read and you're not clear on it, pick up the phone and call the author. People are like, well, that's, that's, I, I can't do that. Folks, I wrote this. I think I told you earlier, I wrote this over the course of two years. If you were to call me about anything in this manuscript, I would probably sit and talk to you for hours because guess what? You read my book? Really? You read my book? Great. What part did you read? Where are you from? What do you do? Because you read my book. So please understand, it's not about just reading it and then you interpret it. How many times have we read something in human history and we interpreted it completely wrong? It wasn't what the original author meant. So please, if you would, understand, you're going to work with a wide range of clients. Make sure that you have the support system to communicate with that will give you all the information you need to manage that client. Make sure that you review the protocols from the Medical Exercise Specialist Training Series or from our PREPS manual. And if you have a question, pick up the phone and call another MES and always feel free to call me. We'll be glad to help you out. Now, we're developing a membership-based website. I think we're gonna go with the name Medical Exercise Specialist 360 where we'll have information in there that goes beyond the MEST program but provides information to all of our MESs on practice development, business development, as well as advanced concepts in managing your clients with a wide range of medical conditions. So that'll be a resource we'll have available to you. I realize you're the Lone Ranger out there. You're trying to do it on your own, but please understand, don't do it on your own and get the wrong answer. At least collaborate with someone else. So thanks again for listening in. As I said, this was our fourth installment. Uh, we've got our fifth installment coming up. And please, if you have any questions, go to the Facebook page or here on the blog and submit your questions or email me at drmike at postrehab.com. Thank you again, folks. Have a great one.